Hello, and welcome to another episode of Unworthy History. We're going to talk about actual history on this program today. And today I'm going to read a story from this book right here. This book isn't quite as well known as some of the books that I've read from on this program. It's called 70 Years in Texas, Memories of the Pioneer Days, Indian Depredations, and the Northwest Cattle Trail. Uh, it was published by uh, J.M. Franks. So you can see his uh, name there. Uh, J.M. Franks lived in Gatesville, Texas. This was published in 1924, and it starts with uh, some of his boyhood memories of growing up in Texas, and uh, particularly some of the Indian depredations that took place there. So today I'm going to read the story about uh, two preachers, Griffith and White, uh, who were unfortunate enough to encounter a Comanche raiding party back in 1860. In the spring of 1860, two old primitive Baptist preachers who lived in Hamilton County were on their way from their home in Hamilton County to an association meet on Rains Creek in Coriel County. Rains Creek is where Coriel City is now, but before I go any further in this matter, I will say that this was a long time before there were any telephones or anything of that kind in the country, and the people were very thinly settled. The Indians could get down in the country unmolested. They would generally come down on the dark nights and would spy out the country and get everything ready by the time the moon was full, but I will speak of this later on. This time I am going to speak of Reverend R. B. Wells, who was living four miles north of Gatesville at a spring known as the Four Mile Spring. It is now on the Gatesville and Turnersville Road, one mile north of the State Training School. Reverend Wells had just driven up his horses and put them in the corral and put salt out for them. The corral was north a little from the house. He had been in the house but a short time when he heard a racket and on looking out discovered that the Indians were driving his horses out. Six or eight of the Indians were headed straight for the mountain with his horses, giving the Indian whoop and going at top speed. I think that there was a saddle horse or two south of the house the Indians did not get, but I am not sure. This bunch of Indians struck across the mountain. Reverend Griffith and White, as I have stated, started from their home in Hamilton County. The big spring was on their route, and about two miles above the ranch, they saw a bunch of horses in a live oak grove, and these two old men thought they would investigate the matter. But before they got very close, four or five Indians sprang on their horses, and the chase was on. Griffith was riding a good horse. White was riding a pony. Griffith started north, and White in the direction of the Buchanan Ranch, with one lone Indian after him, and four or five after Griffith. This Indian soon ran up to the side of White and began to make motions for him to get off, but White kept riding. The Indian then drew out an arrow and shot. White then turned and started after the rest of the Indians that were after Griffith, having been hit by the arrow. This Indian, from what White said, was riding a little bay horse of Reverend Wells that they had stolen the day before at the Wells Ranch. White got to Buchanan's and gave the alarm, and they soon gathered up several men and started out to look for Griffith and the Indians. The old man had got to the breaks of Neal's Creek, but the Indian shot him several times before he could get off his horse. He was off the horse and in a thicket, and the men heard him hallooing. They got him out into Buchanan's, where he died in a few days. White got well and went home, but the spike of the arrow lodged under his shoulder blade, and it was never removed. This old man lived for several years, but always suffered from this wound. I have heard him preach after the Civil War. So you see that these old pioneer preachers, they had their share of troubles as well as any other people. After this bunch of Indians killed Griffith, and shot white, they killed a young man by the name of Knight. He was chopping cedar poles up in the brakes. They killed and then scalped him and left him in the brakes. He had a jug of water which they broke on a big stump. It was believed that they thought it was a jug of whiskey. I do not know whether Reverend R.B. Wells ever got any of his horses back or not. O.F. or Fisher Wells, who lives in Gatesville, was a small child when his father's horses were taken from the corral at the Four Mile Spring. Reverend Wells was a good Christian man. He died of cancer. So that's it for this story right here. So you can see, uh, again, I'm reading from this uh, new book I got. It's uh, not a well-known book. I think it's pretty rare. 
uh, 70 years in Texas, but it sort of has a different uh, writing style than some of the other stories I've read, like from Indian depredations in Texas. Uh, but it does provide uh, some accounts of these Indian battles and uh, raids that uh, aren't available in other books. So if you want to hear more episodes like this, then be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Unworthy History.